Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another short little unboxing to share with you guys. I think there's something pretty intense in this box. There's a, a couple of indicators, but I, I've been racking my brain to remember the conversation with this person and I can't. So what's new? If it's something that you can actually buy, I'll link it down below, but honestly, I'm kind of thinking probably not. Anyways, I'm gonna share it with you guys. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, so this package was sent to me by Seth. Thank you very much, Seth. I am certain I will remember our conversation as soon as I am into this box. I'm gonna make shallow cuts here. Shallow controlled tactical cuts. Um, and uh, just so that I don't accidentally cleave whatever's inside of it. Okay. Okay. We have some bubble stuff. Is there anything? Okay. Looking for a note. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, okay, buckle up. Because this is going to be pretty interesting. I'm going to link. Actually, this this will be something that you can get your hands on. Uh, and I'm going to link it right down below. Um, basically, any information uh, about it. But So what we have here. This is avian knives. Oh, boy. Look at that. So there's some extremely unique elements here. The, this this is cool, guys. This is gonna be really cool. <laughs> I saw a demonstration of this and I am now going to attempt uh, uh, it. Uh, this is the Atlas in CPM Magna Cut at 62. Uh, and then it says standard variant, May 10th, 2022. Okay, so uh, here's the card here. Uh, thank you for making your purchase with us. We are thrilled that you have chosen to join our journey to push the boundaries of innovation and quality in lightweight knives. Uh, all our products come with a lifetime warranty. We encourage you to learn, use, and enjoy your new tool as intended. We would love to hear from you. Please come join our community on social media, Team Avian. So make sure you check out Avian Knives on Instagram. Uh, you can actually check this if you don't want to use the links down in my description. Um, you can check all this stuff out right here at these various social media places. So the first thing I'm going to do, oh boy, okay, how do we, oh, I see, I see, okay, all right, yeah, very smooth, very smooth. What do we have going on here? Am I on the lock bar? Is that what's happening? I think that's maybe what was happening there, yeah, okay, so the action is definitely smooth, but I need to keep my fingers off the, yeah, there we go. So it's back here. Now, this video might be edited while I figure this out, but the idea here from what I understand is that the disassembly, if you're looking at this and going, how does it come apart? It looks proprietary. Uh, this is something that you can just do whenever you want. And I believe there are no tools involved whatsoever. So uh, I'm going to attempt to do that. Okay, so I wanted to get a little closer. I watched a video on the disassembly of this a while back, and I believe it starts back here. There's a little, yeah. And so we pull this out. Okay, now it's starting to come here. There we go. So, okay, so there's those two pieces right there. And then now it looks like more is starting to come out. There's this. All right. Ah, <laughs> yes, there it is. Neat. Okay. Um, a lot of pieces. Oh, there we go. So it'll come off. Okay. So this was, I did this without tools. Um, so I cut, mm, I've probably been at this for about five minutes, but it's also me trying to discover this all on my own here. So there's the bearings, the internals, right? And so we're we're completely into the knife, nice and smooth. Very, there's a lot of skeletonization going on in here. Look at this, right? Lot of uh, uh, intricate work going on here. That's pretty cool. 
Um, I, I couldn't imagine what was involved in making this work. We've, now we've seen, you know, designs that are toolless in disassembly before. It's not the first time. Um, but it is neat, right? I mean, they're, they're definitely, uh, CRKT did that one where it's like just a, a, you know, a couple of steps and that's neat. This has definitely more steps, but I think the average person could easily figure out how to disassemble it. Um, so, uh, at this point, I think what I'm going to do is try and maybe hyperlapse putting it back together. Um, so you can kind of see what's involved with that, but just at a higher speed, because otherwise this video is going to be way too long. But this is very interesting. It was very satisfying to find that piece right there. And this is really cool. This is the kind of stuff that I like to see because we have the same sort of, you know, fastener construction or sandwich pillar construction knives. You know, we see that over and over and over and over again, right? Uh, so while this is certainly not a system that every single person is going to need, it definitely does cater to the um, you know, the knife enthusiast who likes to take their stuff apart and sort of tinker with it, it's fun, right? It's like putting, it's like taking apart and putting together a puzzle that can cut you if you're not careful. But uh, it is interesting, absolutely. This is definitely not something I've ever seen before, so very cool. Let's let's hyper uh, hyperlapse the reassembly, which will probably look very clunky because number one, it's the first time I'm doing it, and I'm also trying to do it in a way where I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I'm just trying to sort of figure it out on my own so I can report on that. Okay, I got it back together uh, and it works. Um, so that was really fun um, and it was, I gotta be honest, I looked at that and thought, okay, neat, you can get it apart without tools, but this is going to be a mess to get back together, to get everything to line up. Actually, no. I mean, you know, you could kind of see in hyperlapse, I fumbled around a little bit, figuring out the order of things, um, but this pin back here just pushes back through everything. Uh, so, you know, I just kind of, you just did it in reverse, right? I, sli I slid this back into place and made sure that this was connected, like put the, you know, the, you got to put that little pin in back here, make sure that that's in because that fell out and then put this down, put it sort of on top of the, make sure that that, that hinge is in there correctly for this backspace part that swings out. Um, and then once you've got that down, it's just a matter of putting these things back in order. And this, this uh, pin right here, you can see it's sort of oval shaped, uh, ov <laughs> oval shaped, and it won't, the, the only way it can come back out is if you, because when you move this thing back here, what it does is it rotates this pin so that it can actually fall through that slot. You can see that slot underneath is actually shaped just like the top of this pin. So when this is down and it's horizontal, it's not coming back out of there. And it's completely, it's completely and totally tight. There's nothing, the only thing that I think I can hear is maybe the bearings, right? Now, this is still, to my understanding, a prototype that's going to be tweaked. Uh, some of those pieces are a little bit sharp. Not that that's that big of a deal, but I can definitely, this guy right here, I can definitely see me accidentally poking myself good with that guy on the way, on the way back out, right? Um, and then some of the pins it would be cool if they were just fixed in place, right? Like the pin holding the, the hinge right here and the pin back here. It'd be nice if that just stayed on the frame because those are the types of things that can, you know, fall into a carpet and just be gone forever. Um, but, you know, they may be ahead of that. They may be um, looking to alter a, a couple of things. I'm not really sure. Um, but, uh, you know, the other thing, this right here, this detent area is where the detent ball comes up onto the blade. It's a little bit crusty, right? As far as the actual lockout, oh, the lockout is completely and totally solid. Not feeling pivot lash, there's just something moving on the the lock, um, maybe it's just because I'm holding the lock bar. No, it's good. Very smooth, and then the detent is kind of light, and then I noticed that it did come back, come off center when I put it all back together. Um, it was centered when it came back, I mean like when it, it uh, when I unboxed it, I'm sure you guys saw, um, but the, I'm not sure why that is the case. Uh, this area right here, there's a little bit of play, right, in the closed position. So if they can find out a way to eliminate that, 
Um, and I think the detent could probably, like the action on this is great. The action is just fine. This area right here, for some, oh, it's because I keep putting my finger on the, it's because I keep putting my finger on the lock bar. But this is kind of a, this is a tight little area between where the detent ball is coming up on the face of the blade and then the room that this guy has before it's running into its over treble stop. It's not wanting to let me do that super easily with one hand for some reason. I keep thinking it's because, yeah, right there it was okay. So maybe it's just a matter of where I'm placing my hand, but it seems to get hung up on something there. And that's what people are gonna wanna do. The reason I'm pointing that out is because people are gonna, uh, gonna wanna do that. You can also just move your hands down, go like this, turn it sideways and it'll fall, right? So it depends on how you do that. Some people do it differently. If you're left you know, handed manipulating with the left hand, no no difference whatsoever. So it's just the pressure that I'm putting on things from this position, right? Probably here. It's a narrow frame, so this is gonna happen. But if you turn it and just release like this, well, no, it's my finger again. It's most, what I'm finding out here is it's mostly my finger. Um, but the flipping action is good, definitely. And like I said, it, it sounds like they're probably going to tweak some things. Um, but yeah, so doing that again, like here's the main question. Is it actually convenient and is it actually solid, right? Is the knife going to come apart on its own? No, there is no way that this is going to come apart on its own. This back here would have to be pulled out and it takes quite a bit of, you have to dig in there and there's a lot of tension right here. This is a lot. There's a lot of pressure holding everything down. Not likely that that's going to come out, but maybe, maybe just to make sure it could be some sort of like sort of slide lock where you have to like release it and then this releases or maybe that would make it worse. I don't know. Maybe that makes things more complicated, but it's very unlikely that this is going to come apart on its own. And even if this does come out, it's not like the knife is just going to explode apart, right? It kind of requires that you, it seemed like here and then open this up and then I open the blade like this because I didn't want the, I felt like the frame lock with the detent ball being down in that hole might make things more difficult. So I open it up kind of like this at 90 degrees, which is something that I do with almost every knife when I'm disassembling it. it just seems like that's kind of the neutral zone, right? You open it up all the way and the frame lock is, you know, in uh, the pressure of it is pushing up on the blade tang because it's supposed to it's supposed to be locked out, right? Here, it kind of seems like the right way to do that. And that, and it finally did release, right? So that's just, it's just me it's just making direct observations. I, I don't know if that's exactly right or not, but um, I did, like I said, a long time ago, I watched their disassembly video when they said they were going to send this to me. And I was like, oh, interesting. And I just thought, uh, maybe I'll just go from the starting point, which I remembered. So anyways, this is really, really cool. This is not an unboxing. I'm sorry. This is not a review. This is just an unboxing and first impressions. And like I said, we are looking at a prototype as far as I understand. So there's probably, you know, there might be a couple of steps or a couple of little things here or there that they're going to change. Um, I have no idea. Um, but uh, this is really, really cool. And I will definitely give my full thoughts on it as soon as I've had some more time, you know, to spend with it. I'll probably disassemble and reassemble it again. Um, and uh, to finish off my question that I started to ask myself, the main question is, is it convenient, right? A toolless, you know, disassembly design. I mean, yeah, in a situation where you're using this knife and something happens where you need to take it apart and clean it, right? Something gets in there. Um, this is absolutely something you could do on the fly. And now that I've done it once, uh, it would be a breeze to do it again. No problem. Not the simplest, toolless disassembly design I've ever messed with for sure, but still, uh, it should be less of a mess than, say, taking apart your Benchmade knife on a construction site. Um, that's going to be probably quite a bit more complicated. Uh, but in any case, this is very cool, very different, very interesting. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited about it for sure. So thanks to Avian Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at. More to come on this guy. That's going to be pretty much it today. What happened to my um, card? Well, we'll just use the... Oh, there it is. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.